was using a nail gun and somehow managed to shoot himself in the ab. Oof. That shipment of paper swung and crushed mm. his leg. And the barrel actually exploded Oof. when he shot it. Basically blew apart his hand. <laughs> Hey guys, Will Workman here with Workman Protection, here to make your concealed carry life better. Today I'm back with my good friend, Dr. Joel Madison, who's an ER doctor, and we're gonna talk about preventable causes of death. First of all, if you need some trauma gear, you need some good trauma medical training, check out my friends over at Mountain Men Medical. They have some amazing training resources, completely free online, and they also have some really good trauma gear. So that affiliate link is in the description below, so definitely go check them out. Joel, tell us about some preventable causes of death that you see regularly in the ER. So by far the most common cause of death that comes in cardiovascular disease. Mm. So most often when we hear the overhead page of CPR team to the CPR room, mm. that's kind of indicating that there's somebody who's most likely having a heart attack. Right. So the way that this can be a preventable or a reversible issue mm -hmm. is knowing how to do high quality CPR, mm. specifically chest compressions. So if you are in a situation where somebody drops and you suspect that they have heart disease or they're mm -hmm. having uh, uh, irregular heart rhythm, then checking a pulse, if you don't feel one in 10 seconds, mm -hmm. then start chest compressions. You want to do a good position. So if you're up like this, you want to kind of lock your elbows. Mm -hmm. All the force is coming from your body, not from your arms, because you'll right. tire out. Right you want to do about 100 to 120 <clears throat> compressions per minute. You've heard all of the songs that you mm -hmm. can kind of have in your head, and I do that every single time. I will survive from the office. Yes, yeah. exactly. <laughs> Pump to the tune of Staying Alive by the Bee Gees. Do you know that song? Yes, yes, I do. I love that song. <clears throat> First I was afraid, I was petrified. No. Do compressions, do them, uh, do them well, and minimize any sort of interruptions to compressions. Mm -hmm. Most frequently when I see people come in having CPR done mm -hmm. on them and they survive that, it happens when bystanders start CPR mm -hmm. within the first minute. Before EMTs get there. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exponentially increases their likelihood of surviving. Mm -hmm. Wow. For younger people, uh, the most common cause of death is motor vehicle accidents. Mm -hmm. So you have trauma, um, having a trauma kit, knowing mm -hmm. how to use it, that's all mm -hmm. very important. Right. Along with tr trauma and motor vehicle accidents specifically mm. that can cause bleeding. If you see somebody who is bleeding profusely, then using the Stop the Bleed campaign to mm -hmm. apply pressure. If that doesn't work, pack and do a pressure bandage. And right. if that still doesn't work, then it's time to apply a tourniquet. So those are the steps that you can take to try to stabilize somebody who is bleeding to death mm -hmm. in, the, in the field. Honestly, if somebody is able to survive the first hour of a traumatic experience, mm -hmm. then they are more likely to survive long term. One more cause of preventable death that I see all the time in the emergency mm -hmm. department is opioid overdose. Mm -hmm. When somebody overdoses on opioids, you can check for their pupils. Mm -hmm. uh, they will have very small pinprick pupils. Mm -hmm. They won't have a respiratory drive, so they're not breathing. They'll right. be cold, clammy. Mm -hmm. If you suspect that someone has ingested any sort of opioids, then using naloxone as soon as you can is a great way of preventing their death. That's becoming a lot more common than it used to be, right? It is. Yeah. It is. And a lot of that is due to fentanyl being cut mm -hmm. in heroin or mm -hmm. morphine, whatever they're used to, mm -hmm. and getting a much more powerful dose right. than what they were expecting. Right. But I did a training here recently where he talked about first responders, you know, uh, law enforcement, EMTs, uh, firefighters, things like that. And then he referred to the civilian in a traumatic incident as the immediate responder, which I thought was an even better way to put it because you are the one that is dealing with it immediately before the medical professionals get there. So all of these things are really important skills to have, not only tools to have, but those skills and that knowledge is invaluable 
to have because you can carry knowledge and skills everywhere. All right, so Joel, what type of training would you recommend to non-medical professionals? So I definitely recommend getting certified in CPR. Hmm. That is something that could be useful in so many different situations. I would definitely look at the Stop the Bleed program. Hmm. If there is a class nearby and you're able mm -hmm. to sign up, I would absolutely recommend that. But at least look it up online and familiarize how do you stop somebody from bleeding? Years ago, CPR was something that was left to the medical professionals, you know, and then it was something that was like, well, we can kind of take the bare minimum of this and train people in it and they can actually be pretty good at it. And I love that just kind of as a society, we're taking that same mindset with the Stop the Bleed campaign. And mm -hmm. a lot of people were really thinking about carrying trauma kits and getting that training in to Stop the Bleed because it is really such a simple thing to do. I would also recommend just getting in the mindset. For people who mm -hmm. aren't in the medical field or aren't used to being in stressful situations, it's hard mm -hmm. to escalate yourself to that point. Being confident in your abilities to do that helps mm -hmm. out tremendously. Thinking about how serious situations could be and getting those mental reps in and just accepting reality very quickly and being Absolutely. able to take action. All right, so the big question, what's the craziest thing that you've ever seen in the ER? So that's one of the things I love about the ER is there. there's not a shift that goes by where you don't end up with a wild story. I'm sure. One of the most notable ones was uh, a man was working on a pier and there was a shipment of rolled up paper weighing about 7,000 pounds. That shipment of paper swung and crushed mm. his leg. And so he came in for a pretty significant leg injury. Mm. So you never really know what's coming into the emergency department. You could get attacked by paper. You can. <laughs> you can get attacked by patients too. <laughs> My favorite is this construction worker was using a nail gun and somehow managed to shoot himself in the abdomen. Oof. So he came in without a shirt. They cut a circle out of his shirt where the nail had mm -hmm nailed it in right at my hospital a trauma alert is called a gold alert mm. so me and my attending were trying to figure out is this a gold alert my attending said i think this is a gold alert and the patient mm. said no 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 this is galvanized steel <laughs> <laughs> as if he would have shot a, a gold nail into himself <laughs> I don't know much about guns. I'll leave that to your kind of field, but there was a old farmer who was trying to shoot a crow off of his crops and the gun was very old and the barrel actually exploded Ooh. when he shot it. I don't mm. know how that happened, but it basically blew apart his hand. <laughs> Clean your guns. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to thank Joel for coming in and sharing some of this stuff with us. As a concealed carrier, as a protector, it's really important to think about the medical emergency side of things. Uh, the gun stuff can be fun, but the medical emergencies are a lot more common. Really, really important to not only have the gear, but actually have the training and the skills to back it up so that you know what to do. So thanks so much for watching, guys. Like and subscribe below and comment what other type of videos you guys want to see, and I'll see you next time. 